Hi kids, today we are going to be working on dividing using subtraction. Did you know that we can use subtraction to work out division problems? Well, we sure can. Much like we use addition to help with multiplication, we can use subtraction to help us with division. Let's go ahead and check out this first problem. Mr. Scott is building a backyard pizza oven with an art opening. He has 72 bricks. He will place six bricks at a time as he builds the oven. If he arranges the bricks in piles of six, how many piles will he have? Well, some information that we need to look out for, always the question we are trying to answer. How many piles will he have? That's the question we're trying to answer. He has a total of 72 bricks, and this will represent our dividend. He's going to place those bricks six at a time, and he is going to arrange them in piles of six. So this is going to be his arrangement in piles of six. And this is going to serve as our divisor. So our division sentence would be 72 divided by 6. Now, we're going to use subtraction to work out this problem. And when we are looking at subtraction, we need to take out groups from our dividend. That's what we would like to do, subtract out a certain amount of groups from our dividend. We could do that by looking at our divisor, 6, and just subtracting out groups of 6. So I can say 72 minus 6, and I can work that out, and I would get 66. And then I can say 66 minus 6, and I can do my subtraction, work that out, and I would get 60. And then I can say 60 minus 6. I can work that out with my subtraction. 60 minus 6 would be 54, and so on. Then what I would have to do is go back and count how many times did I subtract 6. So here I subtract, that would be 1, 2, 3. And what I'm trying to do is subtract out 6 until I reach 0, or I can no longer take out groups of 6. That is one way that I can, I can do this. Now, this way works with repeated subtraction, but isn't very efficient. So let's look at another approach to doing this. This is a totally acceptable way of using repeated subtraction, but let's look for a more efficient way. So if we take this exact same problem, 72 divided by 6, and we think about groups once again. We think about how many groups can we take out of 72, our dividend. So I'm going to use some math that I already know. I know that I can take the divisor, and I can use that divisor, which is 6, and take out lots of groups of 6 instead of one group of 6 at a time. For example, let's think about some math that I can compute easily. 10 times 6. I know that. That's easy math. I know that that is 60. So I can take out 60. I can take out 10 groups of 6. So that 60 came from this. 10 times 6 is 60. And what I am saying is that instead of taking out one group at a time like we did over here, this would represent 1 times 6. And so that's one group of 6. Another 1 times 6. That's my second group of 6. Instead of doing all of this, I'm just going to go ahead and take out 10 groups right away. 10 groups of 6 gives me 60. And now when I subtract, I'm going to be at 12. Well, I know that I can still take out more 6s because I'm left with 12. So I can totally take out more 6s. And so I'm going to use something else I already know. I know that 2 times 6 is 12. So this is what I'm saying, 2 groups of 6. So I'm taking out 2 more 6s to get to 12. And that leaves me with no remainder. There are no more groups that I can take out. So now I simply add the number of groups that I've taken out of my dividend 72 to get what my quotient would be. And I need to add 10 plus 2. And that will be 12. And this represents my quotient, 10 and 2. So these two numbers get added together. The two numbers that I circle and I get 12, and 12 is going to be my quotient, and that's what I represent it here. Okay, we'll practice this a little more. Let's see. Okay, 
Let's look at this example. 84 divided by 7. Now, we know that we can represent 84 divided by 7 like this as well. 84 divided by 7. Those, these two representations um, mean the same thing. Now, let's think about groups. I know that this is my divisor, 7. My dividend is 84. I'm going to be taking out 7s out of this dividend of 84. I can subtract minus 7 and keep going until I get to 0, or I can no longer take out groups of 7. But again, that's not as efficient as we could get. So we can start again with some math that we already know, like thinking about the multiplication facts that are easy for us to compute. Well, I already know that 10 times 7, remember I'm using 7 because that's my dividend, is 70. So I can go ahead and take out 7 groups right away. Once I subtract, I'm going to get 14. Again, looking at my dividend 7, and we talked about compatible numbers. I know that 7 and 14 are compatible. I already know that math. So I know that I can take out 2 groups of 7, and that's going to give me 14. So that's this looks like this. I can take out 2 groups of 7 to get 14. So I've taken out these um, groups of 7. This is going to give me 0. I'm not going to have a remainder. I'm going to have 10 and 2. And you add those together, 10 plus 2 is 12, and that gives me my quotient of 12. Now, I'm going to show you this same problem in a different way, because I don't want you to think that we always have to start with 10. I may not need to do that. What if I took out groups of 11? So I know that 11 times 7, I know that it's 77. I can take out 11 groups of 7 and subtract. And then once I um, do my subtraction, I know that this is going to be 14, this is going to be 7. So let me show you, just show you that. This is what I'm, I'm doing, regrouping. This is going to be 7. So I'm left with one group of 7. So I would just subtract out that 7. That's 1 times 7. That's that group of 7 that I've taken out and I have no remainder, so I'm going to have 11 and 1. So when I add that together, 11 plus 1 is 12. My quotient, again, is 12. So the number of groups that you take out it doesn't really matter. So you can start with wherever you're comfortable in your multiplication and be able to go through these um, more efficiently. So number 2, 91 divided by 8. Pause the video and you try that one. Let's look at 91 divided by 8 together. So if I have 91 divided by 8, now remember this is going to depend on how you start it. You may not have started the same way that I am going to start. So let's say for example, again we started with um, 10 times 8. We always are going to look at our divisor to see what we need, how many groups of 8 we're taking out. So if I'm going to take out that, 10 times 8, I know that's going to be 80. So I've taken out 10 groups. And then I'm going to need to subtract. And I'm going to have 11 here. Now, the other thing that we need to look at is how many groups of 8 can I take out of 11? Because these are not necessarily compatible numbers, but I still can take out a group of 8. And it looks like I'm only going to be able to take out one group of 8 here. So 1 times 8 is 8, so once I subtract that, 11 minus 8 is what I'm left with, and I will have 3. Now I do have a remainder, so these things stay the same. I still need to add 10 plus 1 to get 11 for my quotient. Now I just have a remainder of 3, so my quotient is 11, and I'm going to have a remainder of 3. So on this particular problem, there is a remainder. So there is not one specific way for you to use the repeated subtraction method to take out groups. And these groups that we are taking out, these are partial quotients. They are part of the quotient. And we add those two partial quotients together, we get the full quotient. And I have some more for you to 
try on your own. Two more problems for you to try on your own. Number three and four, 60 divided by four, 32 divided by three. Work those out in your math journal. Make sure that you are paying attention to all the steps that you need to take. Go back and watch any of the any of any of the other examples that I've done if you need to and try your very very best. Go on at Moto and let me know that you have watched the video and remember to complete your whisk.